I got a couple of very interesting questions from this idea. Mole fraction, molarity and molarity. The first one, we're just diluting a solution. Check it out. 3 liter of 0.05 molar aqueous solution of MgCl2 was diluted by adding 2 liters of water. What is the resulting molality? Hmm. Okay, let's highlight everything that's important as usual. So, okay. The amount of stuff that you started off with and what do you have in the end? That's all in yellow and blue is what we need to find. How do we do this? Let's do it from first principles. Shall we write down the formula for molality? Let's do that. Okay. The stuff that's given to us is in yellow. Molarity is defined as the total mole of solute divided by the total mass of solvent in kilograms. Hmm. Okay. Now, I have molarity with the R right here as 0.05 and I have volume. How do I get total moles of solute from this? Okay. And the final volume of the solution then becomes 3 plus 2, right? You've got 3 to start off with. I'm writing right at the top and you've got 2 more over here. So, I'm going to introduce something called the basis. If you've heard of this before, great. If you haven't, pay attention. I'm going to take the base of this question to be 5 liter of solution. Okay. So, why? Because that's what the final thing is. Okay. And interestingly, this in a way can be converted to kilograms. So, two reasons for choosing this basis, right? This is the final volume and what I need to find, molality, that has the value mass of solvent in kilogram in the denominator. I can theoretically convert liter to kilogram. That's an easy thing to do. So, it's in the denominator and it's a known quantity, the final quantity. Okay, that's why I'm choosing this as the basis. Okay, let's get to what we need to do here. Assuming we have 5 liter solution, which is kind of obvious now, you really think about it. I know there are a lot of colors here, they're all relevant. So, total moles of solute, how do we find that out? I think we can sort of convert 5 liters to whatever mass, that's an easy thing to do. We'll talk about that. Molarity is defined as moles of solute in 1 liter of solution. So, this value 0.05 is the amount of moles in 1 liter of solution, okay? But I need to get total moles. So, what do I do here? Be careful, right? Um, we can do, I, I think you have an idea what, what's going on here, okay? But before we continue with the moles thing, let's figure out this denominator as well. I'm going to assume because the question doesn't say anything else, that the density doesn't change too much, yeah? And the density of water is still uh, close to 1 kilogram per liter. I know this is a huge assumption, but since this question doesn't say anything else, we're just going to say that. So, let's say that the mass of solvent in kilogram is going to be the same as, you know, the volume because 1 kilogram per liter. So, this is going to be 5 kilogram itself. Okay, so this is known, 5 kilogram. How do I get the total moles of solute? Well, I have 3 liters to start that I started off with and I have 0.05 molar. Now, if you look at the units carefully, now this is where you need to keep in mind. If you take care of units, they'll take care of you, right? This is mole per liter. Now, if I multiply this with liter of what? Solution. I should get moles again and that's what we're going to do. We're going to multiply both of these together. I've seen students do interesting things over here, okay? They would go and say that, oh, you know what, let's put a 5 over here because that's the final volume. No, right? The total number of moles is going to be initially whatever you had, the molarity times the initial volume, okay? You're diluting it by adding 2 more liters, but the mass of the, the solute doesn't change. The amount of solute does not change. So, be careful about this small step. Otherwise, this question is pretty doable. You can figure out the answer from here. While this is a great approximation, if you want to be very specific, the mass of the solvent is going to be that of the solution minus, let's write the full thing, mass of the solute. But since the mass of solute is so tiny, this is why this approximation is valid for most calculations. But if you want to be specific, be careful here, right? So I'm going to write 5 kilogram as 5,000 gram. And just compare, yeah. So I've got 3 times 0 0.05, that's the number of moles, times the molar mass of MgCl2, which is 24 for Mg, plus 2 chlorine have a mass of 71, 35.5 into 2, right? So let's just write that down. Okay, so this is the mass, and what does that come to? You can check this out, right? It's a very tiny number, yeah. That's all, that's about it. But if you want to be specific, then the denominator should be this. Of course, you divide by 1000 because this has to be in kilograms. So, gram and gram get cancelled out and this is what needs to get substituted in the denominator. Alright, let's move on to the next question. Uh, this one's an interesting one. Conceptual idea. How many of these terms are independent of 
temperature and the answer could be a numerical entry of sorts okay let's see hmm let's let's work this backwards right what could change with temperature yeah what is dependent on temperature clearly it's volume that would change right if i heat something the liquid expands if you take water if you take anything else they would expand to a different degree but they all everything expands okay or if you cool it it contracts so if there's any of these terms that depend on volume they would be dependent on temperature so let's eliminate those so what has volume written in it in the question itself let's mark that out in this nice reddish color so cross this out cross this out we've crossed out 3 and 5 now let's elaborate these definitions of molarity and molarity let's do that yeah what is molarity it's moles of solute in 1 liter of solution or divided by volume of solution in liters ah there's our <laughs> Another one hiding in plain sight, right? So this also depends on volume. So we can we have to cut that down. What about molality? Yeah, this doesn't have any volume. And that's why this is a cool thing. This does not depend on temperature. Yeah. Does not. I'm gonna write that one more time. I'm gonna take some time to do this. This is important. On temperature. Which is why it's a really cool unit if you have things where temperature is changing. Alright. So clearly the ones that are not uh, that are dependent are the ones that are in red. So we'll cross out three, four, and five. You can get the answer from here. Pretty straightforward stuff. All right. We on to the third and the last question in this short video. This one takes a little bit of effort to start. Okay. We got to calculate the mole fraction of benzene, which is mixed with toluene, when its mass percentage weight by weight is 20%. Okay. Lot to take in over here. Okay. This is what we need to find, right? Mole fraction. Let's color code things as always. Mole fraction of benzene, which is mixed with toluene. Okay. So I'm going to say... Go out on a limb and say that this is the solute, fair assumption, and this is the solvent. Usually, solvent is the stuff that's in a larger quantity, right? And since the mass percent is 20, so clearly there's more of toluene than benzene, mass-wise at least. So, uh, fair assumption. Okay, let's write down what we have. Mole fraction, what's the definition? Quickly write it down. Moles of a substance divided by total moles of all the components. So, we need to find these moles. It's not given directly, but you can, I think, in a one or two steps get there how because what i do have is this right here mass percentage weight by weight right uh is 20 percent what does that mean let's write down that definition as well it's the mass of solute in grams in 100 gram of solution now remember what you need to do for numericals like this basis so what's the basis going to be so you may say that okay Hmm, mole fraction is what I need to calculate and the denominator is total number of components. So I could maybe go with one mole of substances as my basis. You could, you could do that. But in this case, an easier thing to do is to take 100 gram of solution to be the basis. Now, you'll get the hang of it when you practice some more questions. The reason I'm doing this is because if you do this, you're fixing the mass of uh, benzene as well as toluene by taking 100 gram of solution. You'll see what, as the question progresses, why I did that right solve some more questions and try figuring out what the basis is do that actively and you'll get really good at doing these questions it'll be second nature too. sometimes students find this to be tough but it's extremely easy if you look at it from first principles okay cool so if i take 100 grams of solution as the basis then that fixes that i've got 20 grams of benzene i'm going to write that down here as mass of b in the same color the color everything is color coordinated yeah you, you can see i like these colors okay and by doing that, the mass of toluene is simply 100 minus 20, which is 80 grams. Sweet. Now, I need to get moles, right? Because mole fraction is what? I need to have uh, right over here, moles of benzene, B is benzene, divided by total moles, right? Total moles. So, we need to find that out. Hmm, how do we do that? Okay, uh, elephant in the room, right? What is benzene? What's toluene? You need to do that. You need to know that to be able to solve this question. No doubt there, right? So, the moles of benzene and toluene are going to be the given masses divided by the molecular masses. Again, first principle is writing down definitions. Okay, all right. Let's remove some of the things that are cluttering this up. What's benzene? I think everybody knows this. Uh, by the end of 12th grade, everybody is going to be able to draw hexagons with circles in them. What's toluene? This is something somebody could forget, but I hope you don't. This is toluene. Now, this is the most important part, writing the right formula. Benzene is C6H6. That's kind of all right. Toluene is C7H8. Are you sure that you understand this? I want to spend a little bit of time on this, right? Because there are six hydrogens here. Okay. And you'll see why I'm doing this because I've seen students mess this up at times. Now, say I remove one hydrogen. Okay. You got to do that. You got to break that bond and then add a CH3 to it. Okay. 
That's what you're doing to get to toluene. Yeah, you follow that, right? Which is why this is C7H8 and not C7H9. Okay, I'm going to write that and cross it out because you're not just adding a CH3 to benzene. You're also removing a hydrogen. Okay, be careful about that. I know this may seem like a very basic thing, but I've seen students do funny things like this. Okay, and that could mess up the entire numerical. Okay, cool. So and from here, you can get the masses, right? Carbon is 12, uh, the molar mass of carbon and that have hydrogen is 1. Add it all up, you get these molar masses, 78 gram per mole and 92 gram per mole. All right, I think we are more or less done with this question. So you, you get the individual moles of benzene and toluene and all you've got to do is divide the moles of benzene by the total number of moles. Yeah, I think you can take it from here and yeah, let me know the answer in the comments.